Welcome to the nice gallery. Yeah, Todd and Kathy. Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> this is Todd. I'm Kathy. So, uh, we're glass blowers living in Edmonton. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell your story. Todd went sure. to Sheridan College to uh, study furniture and at Sheridan College you have to start with two studios and he, the second studio was glass and very quickly decided to switch to, to being a glass major. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kathy also uh, uh, studied at Sheridan mm -hmm. uh, for a few years and we met at Red Deer College at the glass program in uh, Red Deer and that was Many years ago. And, many years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, many years. And uh, now we have our own studio in our garage in Edmonton. And uh, we've had our studio for 11, 12 years. I, I, I think 12, 13. Yeah, yeah. 12, 13 yeah. years. No way. That yeah. long? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. So why glass? Why did you? I, it's a great. It's actually, a, I knew nothing of it prior to going to Sheridan College, really. And it was the medium that, uh, you know, it can be opaque, it can be transparent, uh, you can pour it, you can blow it. There's, it's just such a unique medium and um, just something I really took a liking to. It's sparkly. It, what, what attracted, it, it, it's, it's hot, it's dirty, it's, yeah. it's sharp, it's kind of dangerous, it's, um, it's fast, it's, yeah. And also you can't really stop working. Like once you start with the process, yeah. you kind of have to go through with it until you're you're finished. It's not like woodworking where you can make a cut and, and then take yeah. it easy. But uh, yeah, so it's it's a it's a great process. I really enjoyed the process of it as well. Yeah, so liquid, so dangerous when it's hot, and then when it's cured, cooled, it's, it seems so fragile. To, to us. Yeah. So we had a lovely opportunity of coming to see your work in progress. So it was, you know, just kind of to also celebrate Paint Spot coming over to our studio. That was a lot and of fun. It, it was, and we really miss that. Uh, we have had studio tours and stuff, and uh, I, I think a lot of it is uh, kind of like product knowledge. Once you come into a studio, when you're seeing somebody paint or woodwork or just that, the, then you can really kind of appreciate it or answer questions. When somebody comes into your gallery, and you can say, oh, well, they did this, 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 to, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's product knowledge, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, yeah. So it was a lot of fun having you guys down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful little studio, which in um, the videos we'll, of course, see. But so let's talk a little bit about your studio setup. So we saw the handmade water fountain. We saw four different heating elements. So obviously, your manufacturing skills. <laughs> um, how much of that is homemade? Of all the equipment that you have, a good portion of it yeah. is homemade. Um, so we've been kind of around studios and worked in studios long enough to know what we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very petite studio, so it had to be very efficient. So um, like eight by ten. Uh, well, it's the size of your gallery. Yeah, it's, yeah. it was cozy. Really, it it's is. Cozy. It's, it's cozy. Yeah. So, um, it's you have to be pretty efficient in your space and uh, work well together mm -hmm. and not get burned. Not get burned. Well, that's one of the charming moments was watching where. Uh, like you're using the wood to hold the glass, and then you would come in with that wood paddle, mm -hmm. um, and that was just to protect the other person's hands from the heat and I'm like right. that's so intuitive and such a you know a knowledge point and then like to hold something steady while other, somebody else is grabbing it with the tongs and mm -hmm. to pass back and forth around each other it was just yeah it was really fun to watch and it was a hot studio like now I know why you only do it a couple times a year we try to do it in the cooler months yeah. for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's choreographed. It's it it is a dance. It really is, and and it's just knowing what the you know your gaffer, what your uh, assistant will need, or just knowing the steps and and what's the. We were kind of lucky that day because there have been days when <laughs> I've been daydreaming and Todd will be like hot 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 hot. <laughs> <laughs> I need to protect your arm. <laughs> well, you were perfect. You're like, yeah. look at those two. Yes. Wow, yeah. and. Uh, 
Yeah, I love that you are treating like the one I went to a few years ago. You had uh, the neighborhood kids were coming over. Yeah. So many times that they became like your spokesman. <laughs> like you didn't have to do yeah, any talking. They, they, they can do the explanation while we work. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I know the neighborhood kids really enjoyed it and uh, uh, they got to design their own glasses and choose their own colors and we could make, you know, whether it was a tall tumbler or a little scotch glass for the kids kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite stories is that the neighborhood kids went home and were using their hockey sticks to, to oh, play glass blower. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so that was pretty cute. That, that made my day. That would yeah. make my day too. Yeah, so. yeah. So the title of your show is Craft versus Kitsch. Tell me about how you came up with that title. Or um, we came up with Art and Craft Kitsch. It was kind of, we wanted to make functional work and then kind of elevate it a bit. Functional glass tumblers and uh, elevate them by putting them on a pedestal, putting them in a cloche, and just kind of uh, making them a little more crafty, kitschy, and arty. And, uh, so well, I think, I think the kitsch part was kind of, we were saving all the little um, offcuts, I guess you could call them, or, or bits that were sort of the scraps. the scraps, and we kind of wanted to elevate that too, and it was kind of trying to find a balance between how many of these weird little bits can we add to something before we've gone overboard? Mm. And even if we have gone overboard, is that a bad thing, or is that a fun thing? Right, because glass, to those of us that aren't glass people, always looks precious. So yeah. when we were in your studio and you showed that big box of like, this is the stuff we cut off and don't use. Right. And we're like, that's cool. And yeah. you say you get that a lot when you're, you have your open houses. Yeah. 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 Kids in particular love looking at all those little bits. And, and, and bits. And yeah. Yeah. Well, who yeah. doesn't like a marble, right? Like yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Especially a sharp marble. <laughs> <laughs> When people come into our, our space, it's always different. So it always is a showstopper and they get curious and come in. So what do you hope they take away from this kind of a show? Um, that's great. Like it's, it's, uh, it's exciting that people will look at it in, in a different view or, you know, that their drinking glass that they use daily kind of thing. They may look at it in a different light and uh, have a different viewpoint of it. I was going to say, like, like we, even though we've taken these drinking glasses, these functional items, and we've, we've, we've played at elevating them by putting them on a pedestal or putting a cloche over them, when we make stuff, we want people to use it. We yeah. don't want them to, like, stick it in the cabinet and let it sit there until it gets dusty. Um, we want it to be used. We want it to be um, something that's functional. part of every day. And, and I, want, I want people to have fun. I want people to see it and think that it's that it's fun yeah. and not some sort of precious, um, we'll put it in that corner and right. forget yeah. it. So to that point, when we came to your studio, you made a dog dish <laughs> for this store with our logo in it. So we're gonna show a little bit about that process. Um, I was not expecting it to be so substantial and heavy. Like I always think glass is like precious and breakable. So when you were working with the glass, it was like weighty on the end of that pole. Yeah. Like, Wow, that was yeah. impressive. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of weight at the end of the blowpipe when working with it. Uh, also for dog dishes, and we do make them a little thicker because they do uh, they can handle a little bit of a yeah. um, rough and tumble up kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, you've got uh, you know five, six, seven pounds at the end of the pipe, it, uh, uh, and then the pipe can heat up on you and things like that. So it's uh, uh, it's a little more dangerous. Yeah. I also wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we are, that, that 
our style isn't that delicate style. Like I think some people do have that like really delicate Venetian intricate kind of yeah. um, style, and that's just not good for ours. Yeah, that's true. So speaking of Venetian, you pulled a Venetian rod while we were in your studio, and that's what you made the glasses out of. Correct. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that process. Yeah, it's a it's a fun process. It's it's basically like like pulling taffy, like pulling candy kind of thing. And uh, uh, so once we, uh, we we can set up a mold with uh, uh, little glass canes and uh, just pull then you lay them on a, a steel plate and, and fuse them together and uh, roll them up and blow a bubble. So you can get an infinite amount of uh, detail, um, little thread patterns, solid colors. Um, it's, it's a fun process. I really, really enjoy that. Uh, that process of glass blowing as well. Yeah, and then so the piece where you've got the glass rods bound in metal hanging below the right. image, what, how did you come up with that juxtaposition? That's very clever, I like it. But for me it's hot and cold, like the picture is the, the, the glass is hot, you're, you're working with it, and then, and then the, the final piece is kind of cold and uh, rigid. Mm. That's nice for me. Yeah. I really liked, so we're, well, the photographer that we've used, Sarah, Sarah Bork, Sarah Bork uh, came into our studio a while ago and did some amazing photos. And um, just, she really can capture that, just the process, the setting up and, and everything. And uh, I just wanted to kind of elevate her, not even elevate her work, but just kind of show it off a bit by having the glass canes cool with the process when it was hot. Yeah. Tell me about the mobiles and this kinetic view of glass. I've always I've always liked pendulums, mobiles, and and the kinetic movement of glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of I just wanted to have simple little objects floating around in space, um, playing around with the canes, the steel. Uh, the blown work, uh, just kind of bringing it all together. Yeah, I just really like the movement, movement of it. and playfulness too, I think. Mm -hmm. the, sh the shadows it cut. Uh, yeah. It wasn't until we showed up here where you can kind of get some really nice shadows uh, from the pieces and uh, it's really playful, just more of a playful piece. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad we have it in the fall where the sun's setting so much yeah. sooner <laughs> that we get to see it. It is, it is, it works really well. What it's do you think great. about the, the the cast shadow of the domed pieces there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. And I love the, the transparent. A the little bit of the, color. The and casting mm -hmm. of the clear glass. Um, no, it works. You don't realize how well it's going to look until it's in a nice space such as your, you know, such as this gallery. This gallery. <laughs> uh, it, it works really well. It, yeah. it, it's a nice size and it, and it uh, yeah, really excited to be yeah, to be with the paint spot. Yeah, so the wood that you're using for the other domed ones here, tell me tell me what that is. Uh, an old telephone pole. It so looks beautiful to be a telephone it, pole. It does, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we picked up a few old telephone poles for other plinths and for photography at home, and um, it works really well. It's just the rusticness of it. I kind of wanted to play similar colors and the patterns in the, the cups uh, that would say mimic the in the, the, the wood grain. Um, just having kind of not completely domed uh, cloches to have, you know, kind of little indents to kind of mimic the, the knots in the wood. Imperfect uh, shapes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I always think of the little bits on the side as, as like fungus or mushrooms or something sort yeah. of, you know, growing right. on top of them. Yeah, I like how the rosettes really help, you know, sort of echo the, the knots in the wood. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's so, I'm quite uh, pleased how well it came together. Yay. So what else do people need to know about the show or look at in a unique way? So the photographs encased. In, mm -hmm. in these ones. Mm -hmm. So that's also just, I mean, it's just a, it's a Polaroid, but now it's made more precious because it's dust-free under glass, right? Yeah, so the, yeah, the Polaroid was another kind of a, 
you know, a kitsch idea, but then, yeah, yeah we made it more pressured. So we put it under a domed, a domed piece of glass and, and yeah. I don't know how archival it is. Polaroids? <laughs> yeah, and, and so these little components, we call them ro rosettes. Um, they're basically, we've used them as, they're, they're kind of the scraps or the end pieces of the vessels. So when you when you have all your canes and you roll them up, we we pinch the end with diamond shears, and you're left with this lovely little object. To put it, yeah. Often we'll just toss it, but sometimes we've started putting them away and uh, and using them as other little decorations for on the tops or sides of little cloches. Um, yeah, they're just uh, little unique works of art in in their own. Often. Little things that uh, we've we've kind of uh, experimented, and it's the accidents that also oh goes off on this tangent of you know wouldn't it be a great idea if we did this 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 and and so these little kind of happy accidents of uh, color um, adding components and stuff that uh, really kind of ties it all together. I love I love the idea of saving bits and, and then putting them together to like the idea of like a quilt or something like that right. where you've got all these little pieces that are scrap and then but yet you're, you're putting them into something something new. Um, so you I call you the award-winning award designer so we have made a number of awards in the past um, we kind of do our own thing mm -hmm. you know having gallery spaces uh, little shows once every few years mm -hmm. is really nice just to kind of experiment again and, and uh, uh, we, we do we have another collaboration in the spring with four other glass artists where we're uh, getting together and uh, we're actually sharing components and then uh, working with uh, with them uh, so that'll be a that's another project yes um, yeah. I know what our it's not so much a, a final piece project but the uh, sound project because oh, yeah. some sound. of the, the sounds that happen in the glass studio mm. are really interesting and even the sound if you if you have a hot um, sphere and you drop, drop it it doesn't it doesn't smash it bounces and it makes this amazing wah, wah, wah kind of sound and so I, I would love to just record some of the sounds and, uh, and we actually have talked to uh, a videographer or a sound person yeah. and, and we might do that oh my god see so just speaking it into the universe mm -hmm. you said it on the video <laughs> who knows gonna come by right we have done some production work mm -hmm. but not big scale though like yeah, but like no. someone wants six glasses Eight that are glasses. similar yeah. or something mm -hmm. like, and then and then i say similar not exactly no handmade exactly. yeah handmade. yeah they're all yeah. handmade and and it, they're all unique and individual and that's the charm for me in making them is is all having to be unique and individual. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, so the Alberta Craft Council carries our work. That's probably actually the best way to, to find us is through the Craft Council. The Craft Council. Oh. Or Kim. Or Kim. Or the paint spot. The <laughs> wonderful paint spot. <laughs> yeah, but we only have it for like six weeks. Well, well one of these is just going to accidentally have to get left sure, here. Because yeah, we, can. we can't find the ladder anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm.